Ah, welcome friends to my Renaissance laboratory and Element a Day in May's very first Alchemy Week. This week, we are taking a trip through medieval times to talk about the classical elements, but first, I'd like to start a little earlier in time, back to ancient Greece. Around 300 BC, the great philosopher Aristotle theorized that the world was made up of a primitive matter, and this matter didn't really mean anything until it had form, form meaning shape and properties. So this primitive matter, it sounds a lot like perhaps atoms, which does in fact make up everything. But Aristotle thought that this matter could have four primary qualities, wet, dry, hot, and cold, and that this matter combined to make four basic elements. These were elements thought up by his predecessors, earth, fire, air, and water. I'm going to have to heavily paraphrase here, but essentially his theory can be condensed to the idea that if you added or took away qualities from these elements and recombined them, they would reform into one of these four elements. For example, earth symbolized cold and dry, and fire symbolized hot and dry. So if you heated up earth, you would end up with something hot and dry. So you would end up with fire. Makes sense. Heat up something enough that's made of earth, you get fire. <laughs> Water was known for being cold and wet, and air for being hot and wet, so heat up enough water, you get air. Dry up water, and you get earth. We now know that things are a little bit more complex than that, but from a simplified perspective, it kind of checks out. Around the 12th century, and You'll have to forgive me for skipping through a ton of the immensely rich and diverse histories of the origins of alchemy. The tradition was passed to medieval Europe from the Middle East when European scholars realized their Eastern colleagues knew a lot about things that they did not, including alchemy. Now, alchemy is known for many things. Most popularly, a way to turn various invaluable metals into valuable gold. It is often put down for being a pseudoscience, and the scientific paradigm has obviously shifted away from alchemy, as it's often associated with magic and the spiritual. However, as I see it, alchemy wasn't too far off from today's science. It was the best attempt by curious humans to try to make sense of the world with the tools and culture that they had at the time. I'm excited to share more with you on this classical, albeit archaic history, that laid the foundations for modern chemistry. So stay tuned. Alchemy Week continues tomorrow with the classical element fire, here on Everyday Sciences, Element A Day in May. Element A Day in May.